how to learn any programming language specifically for cybersecurity pen testing. Now, this is going to be the start of a new series where I'm actually going to be learning alongside you guys. I'm going to pick a language and I'm going to show you how I would go about it, learning it from start to, I mean, there is no finish, right? There's always more to learn. So I'll say from start to as far as I care to go. And for me, it's going to be a language that I don't really know. I don't really know much about. And you're just going to see how I go about doing that. So now, obviously, I already have a background um, knowledge in programming, right? I know several languages already, including Python, PHP, etc. But this is just to go to illustrate a very important point that the learning process from one programming language to another is essentially the same. And, you know, if Josh, if my buddy Josh from Developer Direction was uh, in this video right now, I know he would back me up in saying that programming languages, once you learn one, you pretty much learn them all. Now, obviously, there are nuances between the programming languages, and you even have separate categorizations of programming languages, right? Like you got object oriented, procedural, you know, et cetera, right? But at the same time, there's so much commonality. There's so much crossover between the different languages. If you can pick one language and learn it really solidly, really in depth, then learning your second, third, fourth, whatever is it is a lot easier. It's basically, it's basically a very small task in comparison. So that is one thing that I really want to stress. Now, one reason that I say this is that I've heard a lot of, you know, I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of viewers on this channel and just people in general that make the key mistake of instead of picking one language, like I said, picking one language and going really deep into it, Instead, they take the the wide, uh, you know, mile wide, inch deep approach, and they say, "I'm going to learn these five languages or even these ten languages in this span of time." And what ends up happening is they don't get very far into any one language, and because, like I said, there's so much crossover, they're basically just learning the most surface level of the surface level for all of those languages. And they don't actually learn programming. Oh, and by the way, once they get to like their third or fourth language, they already forgot everything they learned in the first uh, language or two that they started with, right? So then they got to go back, right? And so, so it's just really an extremely ineffective way to learn programming languages. You're basically going to be spinning your tires, getting nowhere if you try to take that approach to things. Now, another really key issue that I see people running into is they think that they need to memorize code, right? Once again, Josh from the developer direction would definitely back me on this one. You know, as someone who works with tons of developers, hundreds of uh, clients at this point, you know, and I've, I've sat in a lot of his calls as well. And I've seen people ask this in my community. Uh, and that's that, you know, they ask about like memorizing code. They think that you can tell that they put too much of an emphasis, let's just say, on memorizing something. And they think that, oh, I if I can't just look at a blinking cursor in VS Code, like a blank page, and recreate this code from scratch that I don't understand this concept, I don't know the programming language, I don't know how to do this. That's not true at all. If you were to watch the most professional developers, you know, the senior developers, right? The people that you would say are the highest level of the highest level elite coders, what you'll notice is that the way they code doesn't look too much different than how you code as a beginner. The only difference is they're faster at finding their solutions than you are, really. I mean, honestly, like they they also look things up constantly. Why? Because there's no point in memorizing anything, right? I mean, there are certain things that you're going to memorize because you use them all the time, but you know, those those things will present themselves because they'll keep recurring and recurring. <clears throat> they'll, they'll come up a ton of times. And then it's just like I say with pen testing, right? Don't worry about memorizing commands. You're going to remember what you need to remember because it's going to keep coming up over and over again. But there's certainly no uh, downside to looking things up. In fact, you know, being able to Google stuff efficiently is a massive, massive part of the job, both as a pen tester and as a developer and as someone who 
rights tool, like security, offensive security tools and stuff like that, right? That's part of the job, right? So it's completely normal that when you're coding something up that you're going to hit a bunch of errors, right? You're going to keep getting stack trace errors, having to debug stuff, Google stuff, figuring out why is this not working? Okay, now that's working, but this other thing over here is not working. And so then you find that you have like 10, 20 tabs open, right? That's just the experience of coding. It's messy. It's not this clean, smooth thing, and it never will be. Uh, no matter how much you practice, it will never be like this. I mean, it's extremely, extremely rare that you just write up code, you press debug and run, and just instantly everything goes smoothly, no errors, no nothing. That is definitely an anomaly. That's not the norm. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with looking stuff up. So, you know, if you were watching through on my Black Hat Python series, and you're like, well, I'm watching these videos and everything just works on yours and it doesn't work for me. And you're feeling like inadequate, right? Like you don't know how to program or something because yours, your process doesn't look as smooth as the videos that I put out. You know, don't let that discourage you. They're, they're videos, right? I mean, they're not live. It's not me coding it live, right? You know what I mean? So definitely don't let that discourage you and just understand that is part of the learning process and that's how it's always going to be. And I, I would honestly go as far as to say, I bet you the author of that book doesn't re, like, couldn't write every single piece of code 100% from scratch without Googling anything or looking anything up. He would absolutely reference code that he's already written, you know, go on Google perhaps a few times to look things up. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? So, so don't think that that's even something to aspire to do. You can memorize code, but honestly, it's a complete and total waste of time. Um, there's no, there's no benefit to it really, if I'm being completely honest with you. So now that we've gotten all of that stuff out of the way. So in the next video, we're going to start talking specifics on programming languages. Like how do you go about picking the best programming languages for your needs? Uh, just to give you a, a brief preview of it, essentially all the programming languages are, are different tools, right? And there's always a better tool for the job. You know, you, you know, there's a hammer, you know, and that serves a different purpose than a wrench, right? And, you know, there's, there's all kinds of different tools at your tool belt. The more programming languages you know, the more tools you have at your disposal. But when push comes to shove, you could hammer a nail in with a wrench, right? So they can all, all the programming languages, like you could pick one language and you could do anything that you want to do. Is it the best tool for the job? Not necessarily, but sometimes it's not about being the most efficient. I know we all have that kind of engineer logical mentality, but it's not always about being the most efficient. Sometimes you just need to get the job done, right? So if you're new, start with one language, go deep into it. In the next video in this series, we're going to be providing some more insight on how you can go about deciding where you want to invest your time to learn that initial language. So definitely uh, let me know in the comment section down below if that's something you're interested in and I'll go forward with creating this playlist, which I'm very excited to release for you guys.